Okay, and we're recording. Welcome everybody to today's session on understanding your student bill and student aid. We have folks from the business office and we have folks from the financial aid office and um, even Lauren from advising is here today. So um, we've got a good cast of folks to help answer your questions. Um, we're going to start with a firsthand approach at how to find your student bill on my EMCC and how to review that. And then we're going to take a look at how to find your, your personal financial aid on my EMCC um, and how to understand what all that means. What does it mean to have grants and scholarships and what are those different um, tuition charges that you're seeing on your account? Um, it's easier to pay your bill when you understand it. So we want to help make sure that works for our students. Um, so we're going to go ahead and kick things off. Melissa from the business office, Melissa Boyan, is going to show us how to find your bill and how to understand it. All right, sorry, I had to take myself off mute. Chris, do I have permission to share my screen? Absolutely, I've made all of the staff members in the room a okay. co-host. All right, so I'm gonna share my screen and I hope everybody can see it. So let me just start off with a little introduction. My name is Melissa Boy and I'm the manager of financial services. And what that fancy title means is I just oversee the business office. Um, and that's where all of your bills are generated from. So I am logged into my EMCC as a student. We have some students set up in the system that aren't actual students that we can do things like this with. So I'm logged in as one student. And so the first thing to go find your bill is to click on the current student tab. And then over here to the left, you'll see in the gray box, my student bill. And then you have a couple of options here. You can either look at your account balances or your course and fee statement. And I'll take you through both. So if you just look at my account balances and we're waiting for that to come up, it shows these different account titles, advanced deposit, accounts receivable fund one, fund two. Basically your bill is divided up into different funds. So all of your tuition and fees are going to live under accounts receivable fund one or fund two. If you're in the dorms, the, that bill will live under residential life. Um, this student also at one time paid a tuition deposit. We don't do those anymore. Um, and then they have advanced deposits. So say you had money left on your account from financial aid or you wanted to pay ahead on your next semester, you would click on advanced deposit and that's where we would hold that money for you. So as you can see, this student has uh, $430.90 due on their account and it says it includes pending transactions. That's because their um, charges haven't actually been posted yet. And you'll see that a lot when we're in preliminary charges. So right at the beginning of the semester or just before the semester starts when we do your course and fee statement and we upload everybody's charges, it will say pending transactions. It will also say that for some of your financial aid when it's still in what we call the anticipated aid status before they've actually dispersed it. So that's one way you can view your bill. But if you want to see like a good breakdown of your bill, you'll want to click on the course and fee statement. And this is a little cumbersome. Click on generate my course and fee statement. And we're waiting. And then view. And it will come up as a PDF. So you can save it. You can print it. You can do whatever with it that you need to. And so for one student here, it shows back in April, they had a credit card payment and then a refund for that payment. But what we really want to look at are these charges that were generated today on 1014. So this student is in one course. So you'll see tuition and it will say MAT 12095. That's the course that they're in. And that amount is $288. Below that, you'll see some fees. And these are fees that are charged to every student per credit hour. So for every course, you have a technology fee, you have a college activity fee, comprehensive fee, information technology fee, and safety and security fee. 
and there are breakdowns for what all of those fees are for right in the college catalog, um, which you can also find on my EMCC. So they have charges for all of these fees. And then the last thing on here is a student accident insurance, $16. And that started last fall, and that covers a student up to $25,000 if they were to get injured. Um, you'll notice that for this is an online class 95 week but they're still charged all these fees you're still charged the per credit hour fees whether you're in an online class or you're on campus so that's important to know we've gotten a lot of questions about that especially with this semester being so different and everybody being online um, I think that's it for how to view your bill and where to go to get it. Does anybody have any questions? Okay. Thank you no. so much. I feel like every time you show me how to do all that, I learn a little bit more. Eventually, I'll be a pro at it. That's our hope, Chris. That's <laughs> our hope that everybody, but we're here. We're here to help. Even if you think that you understand your bill, if you have questions later, please feel free to reach out. Absolutely. And it looks like that brings us to our next um, next topic, which is understanding your financial aid and finding your financial aid. And I think the financial aid extraordinaire, Candace Ward, is gonna show us how to do all that. Is that right, Candace? I've actually asked Melissa, which she probably hasn't even seen this yet, if she would bring the MyMCC screen back up. Financial aid operates a little bit differently, of course, than the business office. We like to be our own little a unique unicorn in the universe here. Um, we're able with our student information system to create a, um, a fake student and you just got an opportunity to see that with Melissa's record, but we don't have the option to do that in financial aid. So I'm hoping what we can do here is um, at least go to show you as a student where you could look your record up. So Melissa, if you can go to the financial aid tab across the top, there is a specific financial aid portal that is embedded here. So if you, if the students out there have access to look up my MCC and go to this button where Melissa's got her um, icon right now and click on that, um, it's going to bring up the financial aid portal, which is, separate and not exactly equal to my MCC. And if you want to see your financial aid award anytime, you can actually create your own um, login account. Now, right now we have it paired with the my MCC. So if you use your student ID and the same um, password that you're using for my MCC, you should be able to access it, access it here. If in fact, um, you have forgot your password, you can um, create your account, or if you've never gone out here, you have to go through the first time user setup. But otherwise, it's accessible to you all of the time. And the nice thing about this portal is it's going to tell you if you're missing any documents, it's going to tell you all the pieces of your financial aid award, and it actually will show you once your financial aid award has been dispersed, it will show a disbursement, um, the disbursement amount that should mirror the information that um, will show up on your bill. And there's always a few other pieces of information out here. And right now, um, the important thing to remember, because we're now in our new financial aid cycle, it started October 1st. So the 2021-22, the we're going to be Again, putting information up there as well. So when you actually do your login to this page, you have the option to select which financial aid award year you want to look at. Right now, of course, you're going to look at the 2020-2021 year, but soon you'll be able to actually look at the next year of financial aid, assuming that you've done your FAFSA and assuming that we've brought your record in. 
But I think that's sometimes a bit confusing to students. They don't understand why there are more choices out there. And it's because financial aid overlaps um, academic years. So this screen, this is the important place to go. And I don't know of the students that are on the call, how many of you have ever gone out here and explored, but there's there are good there's good information out there for you. Melissa, if you would close the screen down, I wanted to show them a couple of things on the regular MyMCC. So if you look to the left on the screen over here, if you haven't applied for financial aid and want to, you click here and, and there's another link that's going to take you out to the federal site for applying for financial aid. So if you haven't done that yet for 2021-22, know that you can. This is also when the CARES Act funding is available, when we open that window, this is where the application resides. We won't have that window open again until spring term. But if you apply for financial aid and have a FAFSA on file with us, you'll get an invitation and a link to the application. If you lost that, then this is where that application resides. All of our forms and resources for the specific year that we're in are, are out here. And you'll see it says 2021 financial aid forms. Soon, within the next four to six weeks, we'll have another section out here that'll say the 21-22 forms. Over to the right-hand side, there's a group of bookmarks. And again, um, financial aid coach, for example, if you click on that one, um, Melissa, nothing comes up. No, hopefully something's going to come up for us. So there's a lot of really cool videos very brief, very short questions to a lot of those pressing things that might occur to you. Um, so the um, number of these videos, like for example, there's one here that says, do I have to accept the full amount of my financial aid award letter? So there'll be a, a 30 second or a 45 second answer to that question, like there will be for all of these others. So it's kind of a cool little tool for students, particularly in at a time when it, it's often challenging to get a quick answer back from one of the staff. You know, you have to really rely on email because we're working remotely. So it's hard to get a quick answer from a phone call and obviously you can't drop by after class anymore. These little videos can be really, really helpful. Melissa, can you pop back to the regular financial aid page? The other thing that you're gonna find here are some general purpose forms. So if, if you scroll down here, there, thank you, Melissa. You're gonna see, um, suppose you wanted to do, figure out a budget for yourself. In the general purpose forms, we have something called a spending plan. We can talk about budgets. It's really not about budgeting your money. It's about how you wanna spend your money. So there's a nice little PDF there that you can um, use to try to figure out where does your money go? Where are you spending your money? Or up above that, during the time that the, the business office has the bookstore credit thing open, there's instructions there on how to transfer your um, financial aid to the bookstore to use credit for purchasing books. And a little bit above that, there's EMCC's Guide to Financial Aid. And it's a very long publication, but it is set up so that you can scan down through the index and then pick and choose the topics that are specific to you. Um, you might be a student who doesn't want to put parent information on the FAFSA for some reason, and there'll be an explanation in there about what can you do about that. And then back over to the far left, Melissa, there's, um, and we go up a little bit, <clears throat> there's also information, if any of you are veterans, there's information about how we process um, veterans benefits at the college and what you have to do couple of our policies. So students will often say, you know, why did my financial aid award change? And there's a little uh, tip sheet there that says, you know, why do we do changes to financial aid awards? When do we have to make those changes? Mostly those, of course, are driven by uh, requirements of the federal government. And then there's also a little tip sheet about disbursement of financial aid, trying to touch all the points that you might um, have and then some other resources to where to go if you have more questions. And then as a new um, section on student employee or in opportunities, which is um, new really within the last couple of weeks, 
information for those students out there who might have been offered federal work study and hope to work on campus. We'll be adding more to this. We want to get all of our job descriptions posted out there. Um, for the first time in a long time, we're going to have at least three this fall off campus uh, job opportunities. We don't have the information posted. We hope to have that up by the end of the month. So if you're thinking about looking for a job still, um, we'll have some information about how to find at least three off campus job sites that we have available for students. And we hope to have some more. Um, we're developing those over the course of this year because, of course, many of our students are going to attend their classes remotely and they live in communities outside of Bangor and maybe they don't want to drive into Bangor to work. Maybe they'd like to have a job in their own community. So we're trying to find an opportunities in some of our local outlying areas where they could do their work study position. That'll be new for us, but fun, something new and fun. Um, and oh, in the scholarship tab, um, any scholarship that we are familiar with that we think you might want to apply for is in that supplemental scholarship forms. So if you're an Ellsworth High School graduate, for example, that's where the Hope Milliken McNally scholarship form is. Now, that's all well and good, but on the right hand side, these are external scholarships that we think a lot of our students might have eligibility for. So the HOPE scholarship is specifically for um, uh, short-term training or associates and bachelor's degree and the HOPE scholarship helps people who have children come back to school and get retrained. Then the iGrad scholarship search which is free to you is um, a great tool. You can actually set up your own profile in iGrad which is a financial literacy umbrella for lots of um, funding sources. But iGrad Scholarship Search, you set up your profile and it keeps running that scholarship search for you indefinitely, till basically until you tell it to stop. And it's going to tell you scholarships that are available to you upcoming with deadline dates, oh, say out there 60, 90, 120 days. So it keeps sending you those throughout the school year. And you can apply for them if you think you're a good candidate wonderful way to pick up some extra money for school. The Competitive Skills Scholarship is another fabulous program through the state of Maine to provide funding for students who want to enroll in programs that have high pay and high skills. And almost any program that we offer kind of fits in that category. They'll pay all tuition and fees. If you're unemployed, it also allows for extended unemployment benefits, which is really nice. And then the last three, again, are more scholarships. Uh, MES and the Maine Community Foundation have a lot of scholarship opportunities for students that live in the state of Maine. And then School Soup is a little bit like iGrad in that you can set up a profile and search for national scholarships that might fit your criteria. For example, there's a National Welding Society. So if you're in welding, that might be a scholarship that you'd want to apply for. And that's all I want to say and would give you the opportunity to ask us any questions about the financial aid process or scholarships or student employment or student loans as well, if there's anyone out there with questions. Thanks, Chris, for this opportunity. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Candace. That was, as always, a plethora of useful information. Um, as students should know, there is an abundance of resources um, to help make college more affordable for you. Um, and our financial aid office really does do a good job at meeting each student where they're at and understanding what resources can best help that student. Um, we don't take a one-size-fits-all approach at EMCC to anything that we do. And financial aid is no exception to that. Um, so thank you, Candace, for a great, uh, great deep dive there um, on a lot of that information. And it's hard not to make it a deep, deep dive, isn't it? Because it's so important. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and move Candace and uh, Melissa to some one-on-one uh, -on -one rooms. So as folks have questions, I can put them in and you can more comfortably and off the recording, ask your personal questions about perhaps your personal needs. 
Um, and I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording now as well. Thank you all for tuning in and watching. Um, if you have questions, um, please make sure to reach out. You can always reach out to life at emcc.edu and we will get you where you need to be for help. Um, you can contact Candice and Lou in financial aid at finaid at emcc.edu. That's F-I-N-A-I-D at emcc.edu. Or uh, Melissa, Ginny, and Dustin can help you in the business office at businessoffice at emcc.edu. Um, that information is in the chat if you're here with us. I don't remember if the chat shows up in recordings, um, but if it does, it's there for you. If it's not, I just, I just said it and I'll put it in the newsletter too. Thanks so much, everybody.